Opening on the 4th of October at the Theatre of Stratford East is a new musical called The Infidel, which is based on the film written by British comedy legend David Baddiel with music by Aaron Baron Cohen, who is Sasha Baron Cohen's brother. Robert Gordon and I were lucky enough to meet these two lovely gentlemen at the Theatre Royal Stratford East and joined by our very own Mike Dixon, who's musical supervisor in the show. We had a chat with David Baddiel and Aaron Baron Cohen about the project. First of all, David, uh, very much. I mean, I think that the topic is absolutely hot now. I think it's a brilliant idea. I didn't see the film, but I've read a lot about it, and it sounded like a very interesting film. But I think now what you've got is a red-hot topic. Mm. And I think particularly for the kind of audience that you'll initially have at Stratford East, this is a really interesting subject and mm. something that needs to be aired. Mm. Can you talk about, a little bit about that and, and how you know, what, what you feel about the importance of this particular subject for a musical? Again, unusual yeah, sure. for a musical. Yeah, um, well, you know, events as they exist in the world, we have no control over. So it would be a lie for me to say, you know, I wrote the film in 2010, knowing that three years later all that stuff would have got even hotter and even more topical and thus the time is right for musical. But that is what's happened. Um, you know, one of the things about rebooting uh, a story, because, you know, the film came about partly itself uh, as a response from me to realising that those two cultures, Muslim and Jew, just to explain to anyone who doesn't know, the infidel is a story about a Muslim who discovers that he was adopted and actually born a Jew uh, and who becomes horrible horrified by this and kind of comically uh, takes his life apart and then puts it back together as a result of this and two communities end up at war as, uh, around this man that's really what the story is um, but it all happens in London, it all happens just in sort of East London uh, anyway, my point being that um, those two communities had I noticed become polarised in a way that they weren't when I was growing up, when I was growing up Muslim and Jew were not seen as kind of polar opposites, particularly Arab and Jew perhaps in the Middle East, but certainly not worldwide or in Britain or whatever. Uh, and whilst that is obviously a bad thing, uh, there's something that it allowed for me, which was to do essentially a body swap culture clash story, because once you've got polar opposites, you can do a thing like in Freaky Friday or in Big but more zeitgeisty, which is to take Muslim and Jew and say what would happen if these two things are forced together uh, as they are in the body of our sort of central character, which is Mahmood. Um, and, uh, and then, so the film happened and the film was great and got released in 42 countries and caused quite a lot of controversy. But then when the idea of it being a musical but it was, up, if I may interrupt, it was quite successful in many Arab countries, wasn't it, the, the film? Well, that's an interesting okay. question. It was successful, very successful on the black market in Arab countries. In right. fact, didn't get a, a release in, uh, eventually. It got, it got bought for Middle East cinemas very quickly and then banned by censors in Dubai. And now there's a huge, uh, and sadly, no, not financially uh, useful for me, uh, or indeed Aaron, as the composer of the movie, uh, market for it in the Middle East in, on the black market. Um, but no, lots of, it was very, very popular... And remains very popular with Muslim audiences, that film. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that. But Well, let's talk about the reason for that, which still relates to the, to the musical, which I think the reason for that is that Muslims were not being portrayed, and I would still argue and generally not being portrayed, uh, as ordinary British people. They're, they're portrayed, there was, a, a, for example, a drama by Peter Kaminsky that came out just before I wrote The Infidel, uh, which is called Brits, and which had a brother and sister in it, one of whom is a suicide bomber, and then the other works for MI6. And I remember thinking, that's leaving out a huge spectrum of humanity <laughs> if that's how we portray Muslims. And when we started showing the film to Muslim audiences, which we did extensively before it came out, that was their main response. It's brilliant to see an ordinary Muslim family not defined by their ethnicity or their politics or whatever on the screen. What actually happens in the story is that religion comes into their lives and kind of makes them have to deal with it. But as people, they're very, very ordinary, modern kind of British family. So I think when the idea was mooted that it should be a musical, I went with that you know, and it's always a lie to say I knew what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I just thought that was interesting to be a musical. I now think one reason why it really suits a musical is it's a story which quite a lot of musicals are really about a man who's very certain of his life and whose life then becomes dizzy and weird and he can't control it anymore. And Fiddler on the Roof is a bit like that. Jesus Christ Superstar is a bit like that. You know, things happen to these central figures who sort of feel like they knew who they were, and then suddenly they... And someone once said to me that you shouldn't 
do a musical unless there are points in the story where it makes no more sense for the characters to speak anymore. They have to burst into song. And the sort of ridiculous pressures that come upon Mahmood's head as a result of all this religious and social confusion really suit that. Mm. There's very, various songs, you'll see them when you see the musical, that really feel that they suit that. Thank you. Can I ask Erin, uh, what, Erin, uh, I mean, given, given the, the brief that you had, which is yes. pretty pretty big brief, actually. Yes, actually, you never what, said any of those things to me. Okay, glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> but, but, but uh, I mean, because you, you wrote the music, the soundtrack music, basically, mm. didn't you? Uh, what was the difference between, you know, coming from writing the, the soundtrack of the film and then having to musicalise and act, uh, actually write music for songs? Did you take themes from the film and put them into new Not notes? really. I mean, it, for me, it was a... I thought the, the film was great, but the idea of doing a musical and singing about being a Muslim, being a Jew, and being confused and, all, and you know, put a fatwa on it, which was one of the songs we did, and we have a, a, song, a song called Sexy Burka. Just those ideas, I felt, was a great opportunity to make something that was uh, even more emotional and funnier than, than the movie in some ways. It, it's really a different project completely. And Mike was singing your, literally singing your praises as we met, saying that you've gone... Scar and stuff you were it's saying. Hard there's no, there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's, there's touches, occasional yeah. touches, but it's, it's not, it's not at all ethnic okay. the music. It, it's, uh, well, the music, there are ethnic themes. There's ethnic used, touches. But, uh, I mean, I, I, when I, when I, I should say, when I, you know, one of the key, if I could talk about Aaron from here, the key, please for, don't. I will, uh, uh, the key, <laughs> the key for me, uh, in a way, when, when producers, the producers of this were, were saying to me, it would be good to be a musical. And I thought, well, the key to that is finding the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and I uh, wasn't sure about Aaron, because uh, he's nuts, and also because, uh, <laughs> also because he, he's a film composer. That is totally Aaron's background. And I've done the music for the film, but obviously for uh, Borat and Bruno and all those things. And so I thought, well, that's not, I'm not sure it's going to work. And then I wrote a batch of lyrics for a song called I'm a Muslim, which is the opening song, in fact. Uh, about, and, and I took it to, to him. And within about an hour, I thought, oh, he's got an incredible kind of melodic songwriting ear, which he probably hasn't known about himself because he's only written films. I did. No, I don't think you did. <laughs> I think you basically... This isn't you. No, I didn't. You basically you, you wasted discuss, the first you half of your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I do have... I, I have written many songs. And in fact, for four movies that I've written the score, including for the theme in Borat, the, the Kazakhstani anthem. Uh, there's a big song in Bruno that I wrote. And yeah, also, a, a I also have a previous uh, career where I was signed to Mars Cloak was able with a, an album and writing many songs, but yeah. Dave didn't realise that. No, but um, no, no, no. but I'd never written a musical, and that's true, and, and it was a great opportunity to... But in terms of what you were saying about what is the music, I, I like... Uh, I do like Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm. I like without going about really. I like Godspell. I like I like Wicked. I like I, I really I like musicals that are essentially pop rock operas to mm. some extent. Um, and I wanted to hear that. I wanted to hear a musical with lots and lots of incredibly catchy, joyful or sad or whatever songs that you immediately went for. Actually, not a musical where you thought, oh, there's a lot of very serious cod opera in this. Mm. I don't like those sort of but, musicals. But you're a musical yourself, aren't you? I am, yeah. Did I'm, you... He's, that's what he thinks. Did, yeah. did you ever consider <laughs> doing the music yourself? No, or no, you always wanted no. someone else? And do you no. offer... No, but I think the way we work, it helps that I'm a little bit musical. Yeah. Because when I write the lyrics, I always have a kind of rhythm and sort of half idea in my head, which I then work on with him, and then he makes it into a song. You, you yeah, know, we've always there. started with the lyrics, yeah. or, or the idea of um, yeah. what, the, what, the, what the song should be about. And yeah. then... Very quickly, we work out what the di- musical direction will be. Yeah, we sort of kind of yeah. We, to, we collaborate on the musical direction and on, on the musical style of the song and what kind of song. And I talked to, mm. like, put a fat wire on it, for example. I said I think this should be a scar song yeah. because I had this lyric, put a fat wire on it, put mm. a fat wire on it, put a fatty, 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 fat wire on it, <laughs> which related in my own mind to "Lip Up Fatty" by Bad Manners, a song you may or may not know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's a right? One, yeah. uh, and I think I played you "Lip Up Fatty" by Bad but Manners. It's always uh, good to have kind of. Other songs to take pay homage to, and yeah, yeah, like yeah. Well, there's quite a lot. It's of always styles. good to, to to reference. It's, it, you, when you start to write anything, you need to start something. It's yeah. great to if you have a, some idea. It may be completely the wrong idea, but at least it's a start that you decide doesn't work or it works, and you go. But with interestingly the, enough, the I think that although there's quite a lot of different styles in it, there's ska, there's funk, there's pure pop, there's quite big kind of rock and roll in it as well something about the way Aaron writes which feels to me like it doesn't sound like a whole different patchwork of songs yeah. There's, you can hear his melodic voice. thing throughout which I, I, I have to say 
you know, and I, I hate blowing too much smoke up his ass, but the one thing that, I don't uh, mind, fine. you know, and, and you know, hey, it's <laughs> funny and, you know, that's mainly me, uh, but, mm. but the one thing that people have taken away from these workshops, I think, I know what you think, Mike, okay. is they come away thinking, I cannot stop hearing these songs in my they head. Are, they're, they're, they're they're absolutely unbelievably they're, catchy and you, you'll get beautiful. earworms. Absolutely, you'll get earworms from the songs. Also, you will see that there is a complete voice. And, and shut up a second, Aaron. But but you I do have much. I'm just one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually, you know, one of the things one of the things that will become apparent when you see the show is that although there are lots of different styles, it doesn't feel like lots of different composers. It yeah. feels like one composer. Yeah, that really does. That, that's Absolutely. so unusual. And that is really... Yeah. And, and, and are we bringing themes back and all that kind of yeah, fun yeah. stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Themes what, are brought back. I mean, it has a slight... It's sort. I mean, it's totally a musical uh, with talking in but between. Musical. It's not a sung through musical, but it has slight elements of that to it. We do bring back themes, and actually, by the end, the end scene by the end scene, it becomes a sung through musical. We, we but, bring back all the, uh, many yeah, of the themes. Yeah. I, I'm going to, you know, thub, thump my own tub here, but oh. but but uh, you know, for me, this is very important as a British musical because we oh. so much of the West End now is dominated by American musicals, and they're not always that good. I mean, I won't mention the ones I, I don't think are that good, but they're not always that good. And for example, Chorus Line closed very very quickly, and everybody thought it was going to run for years. Well, why would it now? run for years you know when you're reviving something that was a great success 25 years ago why bother now and why bother in Britain and I think it's a it's a pity I think that I can't sing didn't succeed because I thought it was quite a fun show I think there may have been th- things yeah, wrong with were, it it was a fun show uh, it, you know and it, and it was worth it was worth more than some of the formulaic musical comedies that we have from Broadway yeah. but what you're writing is a, is a British show with, a, with a, a really British subject which is daring subject matter and it's a musical with all the values that you guys are talking about that it's tuneful, that it's funny that it's moving um, is there, are you in any way aware of being part of a more exploratory tradition now of British musicals that might be moving somewhere in future or it, and probably you don't think that way when no you start writing to that. But, well, I don't, yeah. I don't know, but I don't know to be honest is. I don't know that much about musicals yeah, we <laughs> both, the we, truth we both it's our first musical so yeah. we don't come from this sort we of don't come from that tradition that, that, yeah, that David that you're, you're, you're a comic writer yeah. and so you're always dealing with satire you're always yeah. dealing with what's going on today in society aren't you yes and, but uh, actually from that point of view that's in a way why I, I it didn't occur to me that, you know, oh, that's not really something that you would do in a musical, because in a way I'm just blundering in and thinking, oh, yeah, that's a really funny lyric, yeah. you know, he's writing some really good music to go with it, it's all really funny and interesting, so it works. I'm not thinking, oh, but we don't really cover this in British musical tradition. Yeah. It no, wouldn't no, occur to me not. to worry about that, but you're right. I mean, I yeah. from looking around, which I have been doing a bit more mm. since we've been doing this, at the British musical scene, yeah, it seems very backward-looking yeah. to me. It yeah. doesn't seem to want to take on... Mm-hmm. And the interesting subjects. thing, I, I think, if, if you compare it with, say, the huge success of The Book of Mormon, mm. which is a great show, I mean, it I think it's a great, great show, show, but it's a very easy target. Mm. I mean, Mormons are a very easy target. What yeah. you're doing, both with Jews and with Muslims, mm. is something, I think, that's socially very, very useful, that we should have this discussion yeah. more, and it should be light-hearted, and it should be comic, and it should be about the ordinary mm. I think Jew that, and Muslim. Mm. Um, but you're doing it in a musical, so you're actually taking a step outside the comfort zone of Mormon. Mm. Yeah. I think we've got also a very positive message as well. It, it, we're not really targeting Jews and Muslims. They're the subject, and the actual message is really apt for our time because it's a, it, there's a friendship between a Jew and a Muslim, and it's, uh, I think that's also an important the, part the of it. The interesting thing is that, you know, infidel was a word first invented by Christians to describe both Jews and Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly, yeah. and yeah. so, so and, and which were cultures that were very close together during the Crusades, yeah. where, where the Muslim culture was mm. very supportive of, of, of Jews. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, in a sense, perhaps you're arguing that that should be the same no, but now. That, no, but that's key. When you see it, you'll oh. see it. I mean, that's all key. Uh, you know, a lot of the comedy comes from uh, an idea of the difference between Muslim and Jews, an idea of polarisation. So any kind of idea of difference will always lead to fear and suspicion and stereotypes. Yeah. And that's what we begin with. Yeah. And particularly in the friendship between the Muslim and the Jew, they both begin thinking they're sort of thrown together by their circumstance, but they both think, I don't like this person because essentially of what I, what I understand them yeah. to be. And then by the end of it, that, that's change and also because there's a fundamentalist in it who's also challenged by Mahmood who starts to learn more about both these cultures there is actually and and I should say I'm an atheist but it's quite a religious piece in some level because what happens by the end is that Mahmood learns about exactly what you're talking about the theological and history of Islam and Judaism and their connections and how close they are as religions Yeah. And, and going from the book, the, the, the screenplay, and doing it for a book for a musical, mm. have you were there 
themes you wanted, or not themes, but subplots and things you wanted, you weren't happy with, or you mm. wanted to add more. And has that yeah. given you a chance to to go back and? Yeah, yeah, quite around? a few things. I mean, lots of things have changed. Lots of you know, bits that I didn't think work in the in the film, I've got rid of. Uh, I brought in lots of things that weren't there. I've updated it. There's lots of uh, new, new lo- things. Lo- lots of new jokes, and and mm. you know the songs really. They take the whole piece somewhere else. You know, it's not just like, oh, here's the film, and now it's a song. It feels to me that once you get the songs, a lot of things change in the colour of the piece, um, and things suddenly get more emphasis, and you know, uh, all the rest of it. It becomes a bigger, in a way, a whole bigger thing. But I just wanted to say something about Book of Mormon, mm. which I really love, by the way. I think Book of Mormon is a brilliant uh, piece of work, uh, and it's not actually not just about. I feel the piece itself is larger than the target uh, in what it's saying about you know the way that he, we are with religion and blah blah. But what I would say is the critical response in Britain to Book of Mormon was quite sniffy. And one of the things they were sniffy about is exactly that, is saying, in fact, in the Sunday Times, Christopher Hart said, well, this is all very well, but I'm waiting to hear about, you know, the musical that has got songs in it about burkers and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, we're already doing that. <laughs> we've, we've written it. And, 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 well, not you, Burke, more like you're saying this will never happen. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of people saying, yeah, yeah. You know, come the day, I'm sure, when the, when this this is done about Muslims and or Jews, and I just thought, well, why why not do it? And, you know, if you're going to live under the cosh of what might happen, what might happen the whole time, you will never do anything. And people did say exactly this about the film. People said to me about the film, are oh, you going to get death threats and blah blah blah, and that did not happen. You and do, you, do you think it's a show that could transfer? I mean, is it something that you would that you would hope might transfer to a to a wider audience? Because obviously, it has a great appeal. I can see it would have a great appeal for the local audience. Mm. Uh, what, what about beyond that? Do you think? Of course, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? I, mean, I think so. that's the hope for you know for for any anybody does a musical that that you get it to as wide audience as possible. Yeah. Um, but it's not just about the subject matter. I mean, the subject matter I think is great and sure. all that stuff. It's also a classical musical in that it's a story it's a really strong I think now story about one man and his journey to sort of becoming a better man you know at some level it's a deeply classical musical uh, with you know really funny bits and then a big emotional song at this point and blah 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 and a battle between him and the villain all that stuff so I think who knows? But I think there's no reason at all why you could be, you know, you could be not interested at all in Muslims and Jews and really enjoy this musical. I think. But it also has the family, the family yeah. thing as well, because it's all about his family and yeah. their development and dealing with his in th- his mm. panic and his, you know, uh, realizing what yeah. he is. No, it's a love story. So there's two. There is, there is a love story within. Well, it there's as three well. love yeah. stories really. You know, you know, there's Mahmoud and his wife and the problems they come into and come back together. Yeah. There's two young people in. There's his son and his uh, his uh, fiance who is presently. Who, who, her, her mum has just got married to a fundamentalist who is blocking the marriage, and then there's a third love story, I think, which is Mahmoud and Lenny, uh, and you know which they're, the, they're the, kind the of buddy Muslim love story. Buddy, yeah. The buddy life, yeah. Well, it sounds like something that ought to be a great success and deserves to be too. Mm. Mm, I hope so, but who knows? Yeah. We we ought to thank the, the theatre um, mm. who you know are basically putting up quite a lot of the money for this and generally have supported it unbelievably throughout mm. three workshops and all the rest of it when when I think quite a lot of other theatres wouldn't put it on I think it's and very much seen in the tradition of this yeah. sort of radical theatre. And you used thing. Kickstarter, which is we did also use Kickstarter, and, and it worked for you. It I mean, did work it for us, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I mean, we're all, we're always we're happy to have more money. <laughs> to be honest, uh, but that was great that that happened, and um, yeah, I just think the whole thing feels like it's a grassroots thing as well, which is it's not like quite a lot of musicals. I mean, you mentioned I can't sing. I think I can't sing was a good show too, but part of the problem was it was very top down. It was very sort of put in the Palladium by Simon Cowell with loads of money and blah blah. blah. I mean, this very much isn't that. I can't return you know. my investment with you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, so if this does grow to something, it will be yeah. growing. It won't be yes. you know imposed on an audience. It's been organic. It, I mean, it, if you look at the big success, the Big British successes, places like Chichester and the RSC with Matilda. It's always good to start outside of the big, you know, mm. belly of the beast that is the West End because you yeah. can test a show out. You can see what works and what doesn't work. So yeah. you're doing the the right steps. So, um, Mike, lovely to see you and hear from you again. Very good. Thank you very much. Aaron Baron Cohen, thank you very much for taking your time. Thanks. David Padil, Robert you. Gordon, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank and, you very uh, much. We'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.